This is my 140th video on my work with OO Gauge. See part 1 of this series for my reasons for getting into OO Gauge when I already had a lot invested in working in N Gauge and I didn't really have space available for a large, fully operational OO Gauge layout. Also see my series on my N Gauge railway modeling for smaller and more complex scenery and smaller scale trains running. In this part, I'll be revisiting two locomotives that started their lives on the Caledonian Railway. The Caledonian Single, which appeared as part of the Hornby Last Single Wheeler Train Pack in my previous video, and the Caledonian 812 from Bachmann for Rails of Sheffield, which I showed back in part 112. The Single will be getting some cab detail painted and getting footplate crew, then it will be working with an inspection or director's saloon, as it in fact did for the LMS throughout the 1920s shown on my shelf layout. The 812 came with plenty of cab detail, but it will be getting footplate crew and a headlamp code, and then it will be taking over the passenger train with the ex-Caledonian coaches from the last single wheeler pack on my main Hornby layout. Now, my first thought with respect to the cab of the single was that I might print a colour image on my PC and just stick it to the front wall of the cab, but that didn't happen for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I couldn't really find a very suitable image. And secondly, when I looked at the model more carefully in good light, I realised that there was actually quite a bit of detail, but it was just all black, no paint of any kind. So I figured that the best approach would be to try to add some colour to the existing moulded detail. For that I used metallic markers, and I also blew on some grey weathering powder with a pipette. I did fix this with some matte acrylic fixative, but that seemed to remove a lot of the gold marker for some reason, so I had to redo some of it. This was the best that I could do. Better than nothing, anyway. Then I added Hornby figures for driver and fireman to the footplate. Again, perhaps not the best, but overall I think an improvement over the empty black cab seen before. I think the reason the figures appear to be floating in mid-air in this view is that the CA glue that I used to fix them in place has spread over the weathering powder. The figures are actually, of course, on the floor of the cab. I didn't return this loco to duty with the ex-Caledonian coaches that came with it in the last single-wheeler train pack, as, in fact, when it was returned to passenger duties on the Dundee Main Line in 1930s, it was repainted in LMS Black livery. So instead I got it onto my shelf layout, with stations recently detailed in Part 137. And I purred it up with the Bachman model of an inspection saloon. I think this particular type of inspection saloon would probably have appeared a bit later than 1930. But still, the Caledonian single did spend a lot of time working with the director's saloon, so it's not an unreasonable pairing. As an alternative Caledonian loco to pair with the rather beautiful ex-Caledonian coaches from the last single wheeler pack, I turned to the Caledonian 812, which was produced recently by Bachman as an exclusive model for Rails of Sheffield. This loco class was rated 3F by the LMS, but although given a freight rating, several locos of the class did have Westinghouse brake equipment, as seen in front of the cab on this model, and these were used for pulling passenger trains. This model employs Bachmann's monumentally stupid and objectionable way of coupling the loco and tender, with a plastic pin on the tender through a hole in the drawbar from the loco. This is a horrible dub arrangement. The pin constantly comes out of the hole pretty much every time you handle the model, and this leaves nothing but the thin wires connecting loco and tender, and the plastic pins on the tenders also sometimes just break off entirely. In this case I wanted to separate the loco and tender so that I could work on the loco cab. So I actually wanted the pin out of the hole but I was also going to need to pull out the little plug on the end of the wires. I got the model into the servicing cradle to do this. I used tweezers to pull out the little plug. And then I unthreaded it from under the axles, brake rigging, etc., which was definitely easier said than done, because it barely fitted under the axles. 
Now I had unimpeded access to the cab of the loco. This was very nicely detailed as it came, so no work was required in that respect. The only lapse in the detailing is the green circuit board showing through the firebox door. That's there because it holds LEDs to produce a firebox glow. Well, if you use DCC, you also get flicker. I dug in my box of loco fittings and came out with some springside lamps and some painted masterpiece crew. But when I took the masterpiece crew out of the bag, it turned out that both the figures were firemen, so no driver. Rather an odd way to package the figures. Fitting the figures into the cab of the 812 was tricky. There seemed to be very little space for the crew to work in. I did my best to glue one of the masterpiece firemen in on the right side. Then I put a Hornby seated driver figure on the left side. I didn't really see how else I could do it. Again, I'm afraid not ideal, but better than no crew, I guess. Hopefully they won't look too bad when the loco is operating on the layout. Of course, the figures do tend to hide some of the fine cab detail, but if I want to have the loco operate with crew on the footplate, that can't really be helped. I cut one of the springside lamps from its sprue. They're just little painted white metal things with little jewels simulating the lens. I only needed one lamp, as I decided to use Code B for an ordinary passenger train, requiring just one lamp at the top of the smoke box. I stuck the lamp onto the front of the top lamp iron using CA glue. Hard to do entirely neatly, but I did my best. Next, I needed to recouple the loco and tender. I got them into the servicing cradle and threaded the plug back under the brake rigging and the axles, trying to keep the wires clear of the pickups. Then I needed to reinsert the tiny plug into its socket. This was extremely fiddly to do. I ended up using two pairs of fine tweezers with curved ends, one pair to manoeuvre the plug into place and the other pair to push it home. After a couple of tries, I did manage to get the plug back in place. I got out my powered wheel cleaning set to check that applying power to the tender wheels made the locomotor run. Fortunately, it did, confirming that the plug was actually making a connection. Finally, I got the model out of the servicing cradle, trying to keep that confounded pin in the drawbar. I had removed the coal load from the tender during this work to make things easier. That's the coal load at the front there. Now I put the coal load back into the tender. And my newly crewed and lamped model was ready to go back to work. I took the 812 back up to the layout. Try as I might, I couldn't manage to carry the model to the layout whilst keeping that confounded coupling pin in place, so I had to struggle to get it back in when I railed the model. This model is generally very tricky to handle, as there's so much fitted detail there's almost nowhere safe to grasp it. Here are my footplate crew ready to go, not quite in focus, unfortunately. And here's the loco from the front showing the lamp. I suppose really I might as well remove the front coupling. Well, I did actually remove the front coupling after this. Unfortunately, in trying to remove the front coupling, I broke off the front of the brake rigging, which is extremely fragile. I think Sam of Sam's Trains broke the brake rigging on his example of this loco when he tried to remove the base keeper plate. I think that was this one. I certainly wasn't trying to break the brake rigging, but I was just trying to get that coupling off, and I couldn't do it without breaking off the front of the brake rigging. You can't really see, of course, when it's on the layout. I coupled the 812 up to the lovely ex Caledonian coaches from the last single wheeler pack. I thought that this was a good fit. So here's that train ready to run on my main Hornby layout. Now let's finish with some running video of both of these ex-Caledonian locos and their trains. So I've got the Caledonian 812 on the main Hornby layout here with the coaches from the last single wheeler 
set rail on the outer loop there and then up on the shelf layout I've got the last single wheeler itself the Caledonia single railed up with a Bachman uh, inspection saloon so and I've got the board set for that to shuttle all that's the control board for the up the uh, shelf layout there and he's on the inside line so if I my red light there so give him a minute and he should start shuttling the other one of course I've got to control manually but let's see if we can get him to start shuttling first I'm not trying to avoid tripping over on these wires the problem is the handheld units for the um, the Morley, they're nice, they're very convenient to have, but they do have these like eight foot wires that tend to trail all over the place and if you're not careful you can trip over them. I'm just waiting for the uh, shuttle to decide it wants to move this now. It's, uh, it's uh, in the shot the red light did come on so the shuttle's got power. <laughs> There we go. The shuttle always flashes a red light before it's going to move. And he goes through the point there, hopefully not derailing. And he'll go into Wenstead Station and then he'll stop. So while he's stopped in there, we'll start this guy. See about 35% power. This is another one that's massively overgeared. So you know you're looking at about 30-40% power to give it re realistic speed. Anything over is just going to be unrealistic. Nice and smooth though, generally. There he goes. And you should be able to see his firebox glow. Yes, you can between the firemen. Oh, and the now the other one's coming back. Woohoo! Firebox glow, and you can see now he got, doesn't have firebox glow, but he has got his crew now. And we'll go back down to the other one, sorry. Um, I hope I'm not making you seasick with all this camera jerking here. There's the firebox glow in him as he goes by. I don't have firebox flicker because to do that I'd have to have DCC and I don't have DCC. I mean, you intend to. Good lord, that uh, lamp on the front of him is really very prominent, isn't it? Maybe a bit big for scale. I, I did notice actually that his detail pack came with some lamps I'd forgotten that I could have used a lamp out of his detail pack I didn't I used a springside lamp that I had on hand this guy is going back now the Caledonian 812 detail pack the uh, the Caledonian 812 of Braille's of uh, Sheffield special did come with a detail pack which included uh, about four lamps I think um, so I could have put one of those on him Although, mind you, I don't think they have, but this one has a little brilliant and it has a little sort of jewel to make it glow if it catches the light. It's not an actual light, it's not an LED or anything, it's just a little, a little piece of paste. You won't see it, I don't think, they're not really. Okay. Go back to the other before. I was going to say I was going to go back to the other before he starts, but I was too late. He already was starting. So that's the Caledonian single with the uh, inspection saloon pulling into Hatley Station, and there's the Caledonian 812 going round. They will pull him into the station there. They're long coaches, though. They barely fit in the station. And we'll take him maybe back once more, propelling the... Uh, huh. I don't know about my timing there. Oh, there he goes. When I say there he goes, I know I'm saying there he goes before he moves, because I can see the red light on the um, shuttle unit lighting up, and I know that means he's going to move in a second. Handsome locomotive. 
So there you go. The Caledonian single wheeler with the inspection saloon and the Caledonian 812 with the Caledonian coaches.